My name is Jim DiCarlo. I'm a professor of neuroscience. I'm in the Department of Brain and Cognitive Sciences here at MIT and also an investigator in the McGovern Institute for Brain Research at MIT. So the unifying theme of my lab is trying to understand how we can recognize objects in the world using visual data. So how are we're able to see uh, that I'm looking at you and there's a face and a person and hands, uh, how I'm able to judge a glass on a table, how we're able to just take that data and naturally be able to know what's out there in the world. And that sounds like an easy thing that we do all the time, but it turns out to be a quite challenging problem that the brain solves somehow. And our hope is to understand exactly how the brain solves that kind of problem. So the reason we'd like to understand how the brain solves visual recognition is that it, it has multiple applications. The one that really drove me initially is that if we could understand how the brain computes what's out there in the world, that we should be able to build machines that can compute in a similar way. That is to build better machine vision systems. Again, we have one of the best solutions to this problem living inside our heads. And I view the brain as sort of holding those secrets and our job is to extract them and then be able to use them uh, in, for, for instance, for building artificial systems. The other reason we like to understand that is we understand how the brain solves this, we'll know more about the neural representations in the brain that support, say, my perception that I'm looking at you or looking at a face, and that could enable things like brain-machine interface to be able to inject percepts to say, oh, I'd like you to be perceiving a face right now. Even if there's no visual input, you might, I might still be able to induce your brain to perceive particular objects by direct neural activation. And of course, you know, as a brain scientist, we think that this kind of basic science will lead to things that are unpredictable. As we understand how the brain computes those kind of cognitive level tokens about the world, that that might enable uh, understanding of other things about cognition and how it works and how it goes wrong. And so that's, that's the deeper long-term goal of studying the brain and, and its, all its complexity in general.